Welcome back guys to another video and as you can tell by the title of today's video we are going to be feeding the Copperhead Pit Vipers. So let's go ahead and get started. We got to get our female out first. I'll probably get her out show it to you guys a little bit on the camera. We're gonna put her in the holding receptacle. We're gonna try to feed the male first and if he doesn't want to eat we will just put him inside the holding receptacle, clean out the cage. I want to give him some fresh mulch and we'll put the female back in as we put the fresh mulch in, try to feed her and then we'll give them some fresh water and all the other stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get into it. First off, we gotta grab a key. Cause these things are pretty good and lockable. We got our holding receptacle always nearby if we need it. I'm gonna take your top off. I'll just put some fresh water and things in there. And I like to use these three foot long like tongs I got here. They're really good for doing this kind of work and things with that with the venomous snakes because it keeps you at a safe distance. You can get things in and out of the enclosure fairly simply. Like water bowls and things. Just gotta kind of be careful and treat it with, you know, the same kind of idea you would if your hand was there. I mean, it was just a little bit like an extension of your hand. So let's, uh, lift them out of here pull this out do that pretty smoothly because we don't want to upset them too much now we got everything out of the enclosure we can switch over to our snake hook and get this over here it's probably a little bit better and our female is going to be the little bit darker colored one so we're going to get her out first So let's go ahead and close that back on up with our other hand. And this I can help you out with. Give you guys a beautiful close up of the copperhead. Now I do not want to put my hand near the snake because the snake will bite you because this is a bit of a snake. Any snake can really bite you. Just like any kind of dog and things can bite you as well. So let me get her a little bit better acquainted here. So that way she's a little bit more comfortable. There we go. So, here you go guys. Good old copperhead, man. Pretty awesome snake. And I'm doing my best to keep her weight supported by the snake hook and my hand as well, by not stress and try not to stress her out at the same time. So, let's go ahead and get her in to the old holding receptacle. Slowly but surely, because we want to be gentle with her because she could have some babies in her this year. Never know. So, got them in the holding receptacle, and let's go ahead and get started with the feeding portion of the video. We'll give you guys some real cool facts about these snakes, and hopefully the male will eat. If not, you know, ain't no big deal, because they do eat at least once a month, which is like the main goal, so. Alright guys, so this is the Copperhead. This is the Echistrodon Contortrix. And this snake is venomous pit viper native to North America. And they come in at around 24 to 36 inches, 2 to 3 feet. And they have a distinct pattern of alternating light and dark bands along their body. And the background color can vary from pinkish tan to a copper red, giving them their name. So, Copperheads are found in a variety of habitats, including in forests, woodlands, swampies, swampy area and rocky areas throughout the eastern and central u.s i've got an awesome map here on the right side of the screen so you guys can check that out and you can get a real awesome idea of where this pit viper is located i think i have a pretty awesome specimen here that we can always look at and observe and so is the female just as gorgeous so they are generally solitary and crepuscular meaning that they're most active during dawn and dusk but copperheads are ambush predators as well, lying in wait for prey to pass by using their heat pits. Now these are specifically L'Oreal heat pits compared to your labial heat pits. So your L'Oreal heat pits are more like behind the nostril area and your labial heat pits are all on the lips, on like your pythons and your boas and things. So a little bit different compared to other heat sensing organs that other animals use in the reptile 
hobby and all. So, uh, moving on, another cool thing about these snakes is I always mention this in every video that they are ovoviviparous and they're also asexual reproducers. One of the only reptiles in the world that can do that. So, that's why everybody are always very crucial about getting female copperheads because they can produce babies without a male being present. So, that's always something to keep in mind with this species when you want to keep it in captivity. So, enough with the facts and everything. We got our mice and stuff all picked out. I think I'm gonna try to give this guy this little brown mouse I got here. Hopefully, they will take it and eat it. So let me zoom out for you guys, get a good full cage shot. And like I said, we're gonna, if he eats this, after he gets done eating, we're gonna gently take him out, put him in the hilda receptacle with the female, and we're gonna give these guys some fresh mulch and go from there. So, let me uh, drop a little mouse friend in there. Let's see what our snake friend wants to do. It ain't me, man. So since he didn't really seem like he was too interested in that mouse there, so what I did was I went ahead and uh, I pre-knocked him out, if you know what I mean. And we'll see if that will get him to eat something. So that way he's not moving around, he can get a good smell on it, and then he'll maybe just, you know, do his thing. The male copperhead did not feel like eating this week, so we went ahead and swapped them out for the female. She's looking pretty good and thick. I'm pretty sure she's probably gonna lay some eggs or lay some babies for us pretty soon. I'm sure. She's normally pretty quick on the draw though. She likes to eat pretty, pretty good too. But with her being so dang thick, I mean, I don't know. It's really hard to say.
You got to do your thing, man. I can't help you do it. Well, she didn't seem too thrilled with the frozen thawed rats, uh, or the, uh, sorry, I should say the live rat. So we're gonna try to feed her one of, one of these pre-killed ones and see if maybe that'll spark some <laughs> interest in the feeding response there. Now you just kind of have it right there in front of her, you know? I'm trying to make sure all the snakes been getting a good protein and stuff in. But you see, she's already pretty interested in it. She just didn't want to strike at it. 